Hey again. So we tried some basic uh, creation of objects using the insert and using JSON structure. Now let's try and make it a bit more complex. So I want to try two things. One is actually nesting objects inside other objects. I want to show you how to use arrays and then I want to use something called deep nesting where we really start to go into a lot of levels. But before we do that, I just want to show you that the values that I'm setting in actually has inside um, JSON actually has a list you can choose from. So these are the value types you can choose from in a JSON object. You can choose string, number, the string is what we use for the name, the number is what we use for the age in our case. You could put in a new object, so I'll show you that in a second. You can even put in an array of objects if you want to. You can put in the boolean value called true, false, and then you can actually put in null if there's nothing there you want to put in there. So. Let's try and make the object we did before, create a new student, but this time we're going to try and nest another object inside it. So let's go back here to our prompt. And this time you'll see I'm doing the same command, db.student.insert. I'm starting with the curly bracket, just like it says I need to do. And then I put in um, the first name of the first property, a colon, the string in there, the comma, the next second property, blah, 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 blah. And here's the third property I'm going to put in now. But instead of just putting in a string like this, I'm actually going to put in a new object here. And how do I do that? Well, I make a new set of curly brackets. Okay, so this means that now I have an object inside another object. Now it starts to get a little complex. So I want to put in a street name here. And that can just be a string. So I'll call it um, the street. And then I want to put in the number of the street. So just, I'll just write number, and that'll be a number again, so I'll write 22. Okay, so now I actually have a property called address. Inside that property, I actually have an object, a new JSON object. So you can actually do this, and, and just notice, I could keep going. I could nest this as deep as I wanted. So a street could have, an address, sorry, could have a street that could have an object inside of it, that could have an object inside of it. I could keep going like this. Let's just try and insert this to show you another command here. So I'll do find again, and you'll see that now it's actually in here. But if you try to read this guy, let me mark it, he's starting to be a bit complex to read. So I'll do the same thing. I'll do a find again, but I'll add an extra command to the end called pretty. And that kind of makes it more structured JSON, so it's easier to read. So I'll do the find again, and now you'll see, now it's actually written just like the one um, seen out here. It's, it's more, you can meet, read it easier. So let's look at what we have. Again, we have the start, the end, we have the property names here. And just notice again, while we're here, this object ID, that's actually not in here in the value set. Now the reason for that is that the object ID is actually a BSON value because BSON is extended on top of JSON. And that's why that you can do stuff like this in the BSON document, but you can't do that in a JSON document. If you want to see the entire list of types in BSON, you can just Google it or go into BSON types inside the Mongo database here. You can look at the path here if you want to look, uh, find it. But there are other things in here that you can use in BSON that's actually not represented in plain JSON. So that's why we can do the object ID. We can go even deeper here. Let's try and make another guy here. Let's try to make a guy who actually also has a list of favorite colors. Just notice, I don't need to have the address here. That this is, Remember, Mongo is a schema-less database. That means there are no rules. You can put in any properties in any of your objects. It'll allow it. That's both dangerous, but it's also really powerful. Because I feel it's powerful because you can make really, really fast objects and you don't have to decide on the entire scheme as you start up. The data could be that you get objects that are different, but you'll just have to manage your way around that. And that's possible. So let me just add a favorite color here. And inside that one, I'll add an array. And that array will have two strings, red and blue. And then I'll end it here with the end curly bracket and I'll shoot this away, it inserted a new guy, and I'll do the pretty again. And now you'll see, actually I have another object down here called Roberto again, 66, because I didn't change any of that. But now he has a favorite color with an array. And just like you see here, an array just has a start value of a square, 
the value inside and a comma for each value you have inside. The last one I'll show you is a deep nesting. So we'll do the same thing. Now I'll write favorite class instead. Favorite classes. So we'll have an array again, but now inside the array I'll actually create an entire object here. And I'll make one object here and I'll call it, the name of the class will be uh, art class and the lecturer will be Bill. Okay, so this was one guy. I'm going to add a few more, at least one more. So inside my my favorite classes here, I'll also add a guy called uh, a name called French. And I'll add a comma here, and the lecturer for French is uh, John. Okay. Again, it's a Roboto again, You'll, you would of course change the name, but I just want to show you, you can actually go in these levels. I'll pretty fire this again. Now you'll see that I actually have a guy named Roberto. He's age 66. He has two favorite classes and they're actually also JSON objects inside an array. So I could keep nesting this forever and ever. Enough about the JSON. We'll get more into it as we start working more with um, with JSON in general for data transportation. I just want to show you what JSON is all about. If you want to read more about it, go to json.org. 